All right, we're in Ephesians chapter 4 this morning, and we're going to carry on with the theme, New Life Instructions, and we're specifically looking at Ephesians 4, from verse 25 to the end of the chapter there, and last week, can you guys remember what we spoke about last week? What's that? Not, not lying, no, no, we, we talked about speaking the truth, okay? When speaking the truth, we're not lying. Okay, uh, yeah. okay, so this morning, um, I had a good, good feedback on, on that from last week. And so this morning, we're going to look at verse 26. Um, look for me in verse 26, if you will. Of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Anybody here? Anybody here that gets angry? Say anybody here that ever gets angry? Don't put your hand. You don't have to put your hand. Okay. We get angry. Right? We all have that problem. When Paul's, belt, when Paul's speaking, he says, way for put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. That's because generally people like to lie. Especially members of the body of Christ too. And if he says, be angry and sin not. He knows something about, God knows something about us. That we do get angry. And a lot of times our anger doesn't go into righteous anger. It goes into anger that what? Sin. I have an anger problem. You know, I'm not proud of it. You know, if you, you know some of you have never seen me angry. But, you know, there is times that, there is times that I get frustrated. My anger is a lot of times not so much towards people as it towards in my own inability not to get something right. Then I get frustrated and after I'm frustrated I let sin take, take, take its root, you know, and before you know it, boom, boom, I'm, 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 I'm angry. Okay? And so I, I do get angry with people as well, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, and I'm not. And so we're going to talk about anger this morning. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. I think those two verses belong together and either give place to the devil in your anger and how you deal with things okay and so we're going to talk about that uh, be ye angry and sin not I just call it anger call it righteous anger you know I don't know what to entitle it you know because you're always looking for a title phrase and like well, what can I title this message you know so I'm just going to talk about anger this morning now the word anger in your dictionary if you start looking up in dictionaries and stuff and what the anger means, it's a means and I'm just going to give you a just, it's not the full comprehensive um, answer about it, but it's excited by being wronged or injured by another, um, and you become exasperated about the issue. You get to a point that you can't deal with it, or you can't deal with the person, or the, whatever is what you're dealing with, that's anger. But he says, be angry and sin not, and then he says, um, um, let not the sun go down upon your what? wrath. So wrath is the punishment or the rage by someone who has been wronged, injured, or angered. So wrath is just the next step from anger. You get angry and now you execute judgment based on that. Now sometimes our wrath, that we execute judgment on somebody that's angering us, our wrath is a, you know, we, we start calling them names. We start saying things. You stupid, foolish person. Anybody drive down the road and somebody cuts you off? Do you get angry, Anson? Or do you say, you get angry and say, oh, praise Jesus. <laughs> or do you say things you shouldn't be saying to the guy and call him what the type and fool he is and change that gear, you know, in your mind, you know, and think, you know, and all that type of stuff. Take your head off your head so you can think or something like that, you know. Be angry and sin not. He's obviously talking about members of the body of Christ. He's talking about us. And how we need to deal one with another in this new man, this new life. And how we interact with one another and obviously with others outside there. We see a lot of anger in the world today, right? People are angry. It's just, people are just angry. You know, you see people just all the time angry and lashing out, you know, road rage and all these various things happens. 
all the time, you know, that's just an evident thing, you know. But then you go to the political scene, you see people on the political seal getting angry with the politi politicians of the day, and their anger leads to sin and most of the times because they start name calling and they start doing things that is not convenient in their anger. Now there's different types of anger. Now before we look at that, he says, be angry and sin not. So I want to add, I want to go down to verse 29, 29 and to 32. I'm just going to read those verses because a lot of times when we anger, angry, these are the evidence of our anger. Look at verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. You get that? But that which is good to the use of edifying, that you may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Anger normally leads to bitterness, wrath, etc., etc., etc. Okay, that word angry, when he says there in verse 31, bitterness, wrath, and anger, that word anger is a stronger use of the word than anger in verse 26. And so it's interesting that, you know, there's different types of anger. And I'm going to, I'm going to, and this is just stuff that I looked at, at and, and, I, and I put them down, and I'd like to share them with you, and you can listen to it. And I'm no, no, I am not a psychiatrist or anything like that. I'm not talking from that point of view. But there's chronic, chronic anger. And that's prolonged, that can impact the immune system and be the cause of other mental disorder. It's a chronic anger, just a continuous ongoing anger. There's a passive anger. It does not always come across as anger and it can be difficult to identify. Sometimes you give a passive aggressive answer back to somebody because you're angry. You can't always identify it. People call, people always, my, my wife says to me, and my daughter says to me that I'm passive aggressive. I can see that, okay. Self-inflicted anger, directed towards self and may be caused by feelings of guilt. You know, you just not arrive, you feel like you're not arriving, you're not doing the right thing, da, 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 and you start beating yourself up and you get angry with yourself. Judgmental anger, directed toward others and may come with feelings of resentment. That's an, that's an obvious one, right? Judgmental anger. You get angry and you judge others all the time. Volatile anger, spontaneous bouts of successive or violent anger. You just have an outburst. Outburst. I have my anger a lot of times when I feel like I can't control it and I'm not walking in the spirit and I'm walking in the lust of my flesh. It's an outburst. Okay. Overwhelmed anger, that is caused by life demands that are too much to cope with. And I think that's what we deal with in our society today a lot. Overwhelmed anger. People don't have answers. They get angry because they don't have answers. And they don't, and they don't get any answers. They're not seeing things that they'd like to see. You get overwhelmed. So what's the effects of anger? Now, this is not what Paul is talking about. He's talking about spiritual well-being, a spiritual upright man. But the effects of anger, if you're an angry person... There's some, there's some areas in your life that this anger can affect you. It puts your heart at risk. It's not good for your physical heart. Okay? It increases stroke risk. It weakens your immune system. You continuously be angry because you're becoming angry and then you've been depressed. And guess what's going to happen? And all these various things. Your immune system is going to go down. It can increase hostility. That's an obvious, right? It can be linked to depression. Anger. It can, and, and it can create lung problems, respiratory issues. You, what do you think? Why lung problems, respiratory issues when you get angry? You know, that's, that's, real, that's the reality of what has been proved. It shortens your life. And spiritually, you have a carnal walk. That's what anger does in our lives, if we give it place, and we not deal with it righteously. R anger needs to be righteous anger, angry for the right reasons, and dealing with it for the right reasons. Not dealing with it in the flesh, not dealing with it as a response, not, not dealing with it as a knee-jerk reaction, but dealing with it with long-suffering, with patience, with kindness, with tender-heartedness, etc., etc., etc. 
That is how we need to think about anger. Anger in itself um, is an emotion. But it's not a bad emotion to be angry. When my, when my children did things wrong after I told them so many times, I get angry at them. And I said, okay, time out. No. I said, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of a one, one, two, or a three of them, okay? But I've learned over the years that, you know, when I had children and, and I was angry at my children, there's a time that I'm so angry with them that I cannot punish them at that moment because it will not be good for me to punish them at that moment. And I have to then say, stop, this is how the old man reacts. I want to give this child the rightful punishment that he needs to get, but I'm going to have to step away for a second or else I'm going to hurt the child. That's another, you know, that's, that's, that's stuff, you know, it's an emotion. Now, uh, emotions in itself are not sinful. It's what you do with those emotions. And what do you allow it to do to you? Because, you know, and it, why, why would anger be an issue? Why would, why would Paul say, be ye angry and sin not? Because it's obviously an issue, right? It's obviously an issue in, 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 in the body of Christ. And, it, and I think the reason he puts it on there, because what precedes there, he says we need to put off the con concerning our former what? Conversation. Our conversation has changed. We are a new man. We, we, we need to we need in the spirit of our mind. The new man doesn't get angry and sin. The old man used to get angry and sin. And so we need to get that rightful response, okay? And you and I, and, and, and we, 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 we get angry at, Sometimes that's stupid things. And the reason we get angry is because pride is in the sense that it's about me. It's not about the good of everybody else and the good of the family, the good of, the, good of the, my, my partner, the good of us as a, as a partnership, the good of us as a family, the good of us as a, uh, whatever the story may be for a business, whatever it's be. It's because of pride is, it, it's motivating it. Because I want my way. And you're not doing it my way, I'm going to get angry at you and I'm going to lash out at you. That is not a response of a, of a, that's not a response, I'm looking, a lot of people looking at one another here this morning. Stop judging a person next to you and search your own heart. Tammy, stop looking at the Todd now, okay? <laughs> <sighs> and if you had eyes in the back of your head, <laughs> no, I'm just okay. <laughs> We all have anger issues to some form of degree. And, and so, you know, and we get mad at stupid little things. And the problem is pride. And the thing is, we can get angry about the right thing as we deal with it right. The question is, what drives our anger? What is it that's going to drive your anger? Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon what? Your right. heart. Okay, so what drives your anger? What emotions are exhibited when you, when you get angry? You start getting shortness of breath, start breathing loud, start speaking louder. You know, that's, that's just me, you know, I snap. You know, and stuff, and it's just, <clears throat> those are things that happen. Okay, and so, anger in itself, like I said, is not bad. I want you to go to John chapter 2. We're going to see, you guys knew this passage are going to come this morning, but look at John chapter 2. <clears throat> John chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. Verse 13 says, on John chapter 2, it's the Lord Jesus Christ going to the temple, and the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and, f and, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a scorch of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes' money and overturned, overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. That word zeal, the consuming 
thing of my mind has eaten me up. You are destroying the temple. You're not using the temple. I think it gets more further. Did Jesus Christ get angry here? Okay. And so what did he do? I think he had a, rightful, a, a, a righteous outburst to those in the temple. Because remember, he was speaking to the nation of Israel, a physical people with the physical signs and physical demands, and physically had to whip those guys and get them out of the temple. But let's go further than that. Look at a few verses. Keep your hand in John chapter 2 and go with me to, 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 to the book of um, Psalm 69. Psalm 69 and verse 9. That's the, that is quote from Psalm 69 verse 9. That's what they remember. Interesting how David's psalms here is reflecting concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and prophecies concerning what Christ will go through. And Psalm 69, Psalm 69, and verse 9 says, For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. The reproaches of them that is that that that, that, is, that is approach thee are fallen on me. What is he talking about? What is that passage talking about? The reproaches of them have fallen on me. Who's going to take the sin of the world and the reproaches of the world upon himself? Lord Jesus Christ. Go back with me to John chapter two, and 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 this. For, for Christ, this is more than the physical temple standing there. It's more than just the physical temple where the, the Holy of Holies are and all those various things. Go back to, Psalm, uh, to John chapter 2 verse 17 says, And his disciples remember that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, verse 18, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing thou doest these things? Again, those questions I always ask him. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Was he talking about the physical, literal temple that has been built there? Or was he talking about his own body? The reproaches of them that approached thee fell on me. That's why the, the zeal of the Lord has eaten me up. You understand what I'm saying? And for that righteous judgment on, on, on them, he had that. Okay, It's consumed me. And that's, you know, the, the zeal of the Lord has, has eaten me up. It's consumed me. How, you know, you people, you stiff-necked, uncircumcised, you, you know, what's going on with you? So was it right or was it wrong for Christ to get angry here? If Christ can't sin, Paul says, be ye angry and sin not. If Christ can't sin and does not sin, does, did he sin? No. Because he was God in the flesh. He can't sin. He, does the, he did the righteous judgment. We're going to talk about righteous judgment in a, in, a, in a little bit. Go with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse um, 22. <clears throat> Verse 21, let's get verse 21 to, to start the paragraph. He have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever that shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of judgment. Is that what your Bible says? It says without a cause. Now let me ask you, if your Bible does not have without a cause this morning... And you hear and you sit and reading in your Bible and doesn't say without a cause, you seriously have to consider getting a new Bible and getting yourself a King James Bible because that Bible then will tell you that Christ sinned. If without a cause is taken out of that. Do you get what I'm saying? He had a righteous cause. Shall be in danger of judgment and whosoever shall say unto his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. You know, when you say raka, you know, you look that up. Anybody know what that means, raka? It means you, 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 you're calling your brother a name. You're stupid. You're, 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 you're empty man. You're, 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 you're worthless. You get so angry at them and you say, you, you start calling them names. And so, you know, and so... Christ, and look, look at Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3. There's some examples of getting angry. Just 
Mark chapter 3 and verse 5. And when he looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their heart. What, what, what caused his anger? He was grieved at the hardness of their what? Heart. Sometimes you see people, yeah, they're just hard. They just don't care about God. and just, It makes you angry. You know, a little while ago I was riding with a, with, with a guy and he used the profanity and it's not one of the normal groups of guys that went there. just it was you know it was just I can't even repeat what he said but it just angered me when he said that because he has no respect for God he's using the name of God in vain with a bunch of explicits with it which was just just angered me because that is not and it didn't anger me with wrath it just angered me it's like why would you you are so against God. You're so, your conscience is shared with such, with a hot iron, you don't even, you're past feeling. So he was grieved. He had a cause. Okay. Go back with me to Psalm chapter 7, the book of Psalms. And Psalm chapter 7. And verse 11. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Does God get angry? Yes. Does God get angry with us, members of the body of Christ? We grieve the Holy Ghost. We can grieve God, but He gets angry. We're not the wicked. We are in Christ. We are the new creature. So He gets grieved. Because we're not doing the right thing. Okay? When you're going to judge somebody, and you're going to, and you're going to, we'll see just now. We'll look at the passage now. So be angry and sin not. Can you see that little picture there? Can you see that? That starts breaking, that anger. It started off smooth, and it just went. <laughs> That's how angry start. It starts smooth, and before you know it, it's, <clears throat> it's a break point. I thought that was a good picture. I liked it, so I used that picture. Okay? Be angry and sin not. Be angry and sin not. You know, we should... Romans chapter 6 says, what about... Should we sin or should we not sin? Should we yield our members as instruments to righteousness or should we yield our instruments to unrighteousness? To righteousness. And when there's righteousness, that means clamor and outcries and evil speaking and surmisings and... And, and calling names and sinning is not going to be part of it, right? Because we're going to use our tongue and our ears and everything for the right reason. We have to stop, you know. And over the years, I am, I ask my wife, I am much better about my anger. You know, much, much better. I thank God for it. Because it, 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 it takes the word of God, the renewing of my mind, and a constant ongoing... I, w I have to get up some mornings and say, Lord... I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your all-sufficient grace. I thank you for your word that works in me. I thank you for the spirit that indwells me. But I, I pray, Lord, that this today my flesh will not get the worst of me, but that your word working effectually in me would be the central and focal point of my life today because if I'm not going to do that, I'm going to get frustrated. We're getting ready for the trip to Kenya. You know what happens in my mind? I put everything in here and I've got 5,000 things running around here and before I know it I'm not dealing with them as I should be dealing with them and, and then somebody else adds something else onto me and what happens? I have a response, an emotional response that sometimes can be sinful and I should not be doing that. Alright? So you guys realize I'm not talking about you this morning, I'm talking about myself. Okay, because none of you have any of those problems, I know, okay? Be angry and sin not. Okay? On the political scene, how many of you watch politics? And I know some believers are way, way involved in politics. You listen to the news on an ongoing basis. You cannot stop listening to the news. You feel you have to listen to the news all the time every time it's on and every time it's on 
There's something that you hear. There's some decision that's been made. And what do you do? Oh, praise the Lord. I understand my hope and I know that I'm going to look for it. Or do you get mad at that person or whoever they do? You know? And we need to follow instruction of God's word how to deal with anger. Look at Psalm 37. Go with me to Psalm 37. If you go home and you go through some of these verses, it, it will help you. I can't read the whole Psalm 37, but let's go read there from verse 7. 7 to 9. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Does that sound like something you watch on TV and you see some of the lawmakers of the country and the things that they make decisions about? Like, man, angers me. And now what we know we do, you know. You, know, you get the, thing, the political thing of the day as, you know, um, I'm not going to say the other words, but you know what it means. It says, um, um, let's go Brandon. Now when that came out, I thought, that was funny, in a sense. But we use it not as funny. We use it to call somebody a name. That's a problem. That's a problem for a believer. To ride around with a, with a vehicle, well, let's go Brandon on the back of it. Because the identification has an appearance of evil. And you know what it is. You understand what I'm saying? What should we do? What does the Bible say we should do? Pray for those in authority. Live peaceably with all men. You making signs up and, you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a thing on 44, indict Fauci on a mattress against the wall. Against the <laughs> okay. But you get, the, 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 what I'm saying is, I'm not saying you, you cannot know what's going on in the world. I'm saying you get consumed. We get consumed with it and it makes us mad. And when it makes mad, we sin. Because we don't deal with it righteously instead of praying about it or dealing with it in a peaceful manner. We deal with it in a, we say things, we call names. I mean, the stuff that I've seen, you know, I, I am not a Joe Biden fan at all. But the stuff that I see believers call to Joe Biden... Those words should not come out of our lips. Anyway. Verse, what, where was I? Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, you and I are not going to inherit the earth. You guys understand. I'm not saying we're going to inherit the earth. You guys get that, right? There straight is the right division preacher. He believes we have an inheritance with Christ eternal in the heavens. But the point I'm getting, the doctrine that's carried over here is what to do with anger. What to deal with those people that we are not so happy with because they're prospering in areas and it's costing us. Your, your fuel prices goes up to four dollars and guess what? Are you happy about that? No. James chapter 1. Go with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. James chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of what? God. Who's going to repay? Who's the one that will repay for evil? Do we recompense evil for evil? No. All right? Somebody smite you on the right cheek, what do you do? We give him an uppercut, right? We give him an elbow. No, you turn your left cheek, but it doesn't tell you what to do after the left cheek's turned, okay? 
It's free for all after that. No, I'm just joking. So let's be slow to wrath, slow to speak, because somebody says something, and what do you do? You immediately have a knee-jerk reaction. You want to say something back because they said something that's hurting you, that's insulting you, or it's punished, or, 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 or um, what's the word I'm looking for now? It's gone. But they're doing something wrong to you. And what do you do? Boop, you want to say back. You've got to be slow to say something back. Does he do that all the time, Tammy? Oh, okay. You, you're slow to, you, you have to think about that because... That reaction you're going to get is not going to be the reaction of the new man most of the time. It's going to be the reaction of the lust of the flesh. When, when, when lust conceived, it brings forth what? Sin. Because you want to get even. Because all, don't we all want to, isn't that the way of the world we get even? An eye for eye and a tooth for a tooth? Is that the way of the, you know? The Bible even talks about some of that stuff. But it tells us how to deal with that. All right? And so we have to be careful. We have to be slow to speak. Slow to anger. Wait. Sometimes you, somebody says something to you and like, Christ in me's response to that is not going to be the same way. The Christ in me, you know, for Christ's sake, I will not respond in that way. I'm not going to respond the way I think. But to do that doesn't come naturally, does it? It comes from a continuous ongoing renewing of our mind, putting the old man off, putting the new man on on a continuous baby. We know the old man's crucified, we know he's dead, but we still have that remnants of him fighting and being there. And so we have to think like the new man. It needs to be a renewed spirit of our mind. Your reaction and my reaction to a situation that somebody hurts us, insults us, cause us harm and our response and anger to them is going to tell people about my spiritual well-being where I stand and who I am. It will speak much more volumes my conduct than what comes out of my mouth that moment. My rep, the one I am an ambassador of will be answering will be slow to anger, slow to wrath, slow to speak. It will think about how can I edify us together. And sometimes you're just going to, you know, sometimes a quiet answer turneth away wrath. That means not a quiet answer like that. But that how you respond turns away wrath, right? And so we, we, we have to think about those things. Go with me to Romans. Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> In Romans chapter 12, let's go read from verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now I know everybody's like, oh, it says, if it be possible, it's not possible with me. The reason why it's not possible with me is because of your, it's because of where you stand spiritually and your maturity. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Isn't that what the psalm writer just said earlier too? God's going to want, he's going to deal with the wicked. And he will deal righteousness, righteously with the wicked. Not your or my job. Therefore if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt leave coals of fire on his head. That doesn't mean you're going to make him mad. Heaping coals of fire on his head. That means you're going to, you're going you're gonna, to um, embarrass him or you're going to put him to shame because of how you respond. You're not recompensing evil for evil. Be not overcome of evil, but evil overcome evil with what? With good. So somebody says something evil to you, something says something that insults you, that hurts you and gets you mad, what do you do? You recompense evil for what? You don't answer quickly back. 
you think of a word that you can say. You know, a guy that I knew one time was driving in a car and somebody cut him off in the, in the traffic and he was like, <clears throat> and he immediately, his response was, chase that guy down. I'm like, okay, why would you chase this guy down? You don't know if he's got a gun or if he's stronger than you. What's going to happen? What are you going to do, you know? And he gets right next to the car and he's going to push his window off and it's like, in his, and that moment he was thinking about, I'm going to tell this guy. And you say to the guy, you know what? And the guy says, what? He says, Jesus loves you and he died for your sins. <laughs> you had to think about that for a second, okay? <laughs> And, and that's mostly sarcastic, I guess, that came out of his mouth too, you know, but you get the point. There's consequences to our anger. There's consequences to our anger if we sin. It affects us. It affects us physically, but it affects us spiritually mostly. About who we are and how we, how we deal with others, how, how patient we are with others. And how kind and tender-hearted we are without, how forgiving we are. Because one of the issues of anger is not to forgive. Somebody did something to you and some time in your life, and you angry to the point that you cannot forgive that person. Not even for Christ's sake you prepare to forgive that person. That's bad. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your what? Wrath. But there's consequences to anger. I want you to go with the book to the book of Numbers. Get with me Numbers 20 in your one hand. And then go Psalm 106. The book of Psalms and Psalm 106. Israel's in the wilderness. They belly aching about water and what to drink, what to eat, and all these various things. Numbers 20 and what did I say? Psalm 106. I'm talking about consequences of anger. There's an example for us here. And the example I'm making is not an example that's going to be valid for us as members of the body of Christ. Numbers 20. Let's go read from verse 7 there. Numbers 20 from verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother. Okay? The people are murmuring, right? Israel's murmuring. The Lord's telling him this, and the Lord spake unto Moses, verse 7, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye, un and speak ye unto the what? Rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water water out of the rock so shall they give the congregation and their beast drink so what does the Lord say to him now at this stage Moses is frustrated with the people he's getting angry at the people with all this stuff that he's got to deal with all the time okay and the Lord said speak to the rock take the rod but speak to the rock verse 9 and Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear how I will speak to the rock now as God instructs me. Is that what he says? No, he's not following God's word. He's not giving heed to God's word. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together and before the rock. And, bef and, and, bef bef uh, and, and, and he said unto them, Hear now. You rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? I can see the attitude of what, what he's saying there. It's not like, oh, yeah, you people, you want them water not? No, no. It's, he's, he's angry. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. Now, didn't God say, didn't God say you go smoke that rod twice? Or did he say, speak unto that rock? And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and the beast also. See, oh, well, they got water. Now go with me to Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Verse 30 and 33 to 33. It's all, uh, you just need... Verse 25, But murmured in their tents, and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. 
Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations, and to scatter them in, in, in the lands. They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and, play, and, and the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Fahinas, the, and execute judgment, so the plague was stayed. Can you remember what Fahinas did? They were making, uh, they were with the Amorite woman, having sex with the Amorite woman all over the place. He takes a javelin and he goes in and somebody's busy in the act of having sex and he puts a javelin right through the guy and right through the woman's belly where they're lying and, and execute a judgment and, and that seized God's anger of, of judgment upon them. Now am I saying if somebody does wrong or comes against word, we're going to go out and take a the gun and shoot them? Is that what we do? Now you don't, the rod which we use now is the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. Just the way that God, God chastises you and I today not by sickness, not by poverty, but He chastises us today by His Word that works in us and speaks to us and chastises us. Now go further. And that was, and that was counted on Him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. They, they angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unwisely with his lips. They did not destroy the nations uh, among the, the, the Lord commanded them, etc., etc. Moses did not enter into the what? What was the consequences? He didn't enter the land. Can you see what's going on? There's a consequence. Now you and I, we know we have eternal life. But there's another consequence in our life. It is not a good testimony concerning who we are. We are not doing it for Christ's sake. And so we need to do this. And we need to think about it. My time's up. And I don't, I don't want to rush through this. I'd rather come back next week and, and, and finish off what I want to say. Because I'm going to rush through this. There's a lot of p passages that we want to go through concerning anger and wrath. That I want to read through. When he says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. It's not saying, you know, it, and, and interesting, you knew, go back with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Remember I gave you the definitions of anger and wrath earlier? One idea of it at least. In chapter 4 verse 26 it says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You know the new Bible version says, let not the sun go down on your anger. He's talking about on your wrath. You can get angry, but sin not. And don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't stew it. Don't, and we're going to talk about that next time. Don't let that stew in you. And, and, and don't let that anger affect you. Because and, 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 what happens? Anger rests in the inner man. In the bosom of man, it rests there, and what does it do? A little leaven leaveneth what? The whole lump. You got something in there a little bit, and, it, and the next time person says something different, it grows, it grows, and you become an angry person. And nobody wants to have fellowship, neither should anybody have fellowship with an angry person. I have to cut angry people out of my life because I know how it will affect me. Doesn't mean I can't love them. Doesn't mean I can't minister to them. I just have to cut them from my personal space in the sense of how they're going to influence me. There's many of us that are angry. And most of us are angry for the wrong reasons. And we need to think about this. Okay? We need to have kindness and tender hardness and forgiving. One of the issues and devices we'll see next week that Satan use, uses is anger. And he uses us when we can't forgive. We're not ignorant of his devices. And he has some strong holds on us. He can have strong holds. If we don't deal with that. That's what Paul says, be angry and what? So not. It's not nice to be angry, right? An angry person, if you, when you're angry and after you finish being angry and you said what you said and you shouldn't have said it, does it bother you? It eats you up. But it's out. 
It's words that has already proceeded from your mouth. It's actions already proceeded and you can't take it back. And the thing that is lying in the next person's mind is those words. They will never forget those words. Unless they mature and know to deal with those words. And to bring it and rest in the Lord about that. We're going to look at a psalm also that helps us how to deal with anger and how to deal with those stuff that's messing us up. And we'll talk about that next week. Okay, I hope this is instructional and helps. I know for me personally it helps. Okay. Ecclesiastes 7 9 says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Resteth in the bosom of fools. If anger is resting in us, what does it say about us? We're dealing foolishly, right? And so we have to think about those things and what the Bible has to say. Proverbs 14 17 says, He that is, that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. Dealeth foolishly. We don't want to deal foolishly. We want to deal righteously. We want to have an, a righteous anger. That's good for the edifying of the body of Christ. Good for the edifying of my, my wife, my husband, my children. My father, my mother, my workers, my co-workers. My employees, my employers. And all those areas of our lives. Alright? We're going to consider this further next time, and um, let's pray. Father, we are thankful for your word. And we know this subject we're talking about is maybe real to many of us. No, it's real in my life. And my prayer is always, Lord, for me to angry and sin not. We thank you for the grace of your word. Thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace, for your love. And as your word works in us and we're renewed in the spirit of man, we put the new man on. And those things subside from us and we do not do them anyway, anymore because we are, we are not under the law, nor under the, the, the power of sin, but you have emancipated us by the finished work of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your forgiveness, for your kindness, for your great love, and uh, for our eternal salvation in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. As we pray these things by Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.